my dear friends in Christ, today we are going to take a reading from the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 34, verse 1 to 12. Deuteronomy, chapter 34, verse 1 to 12. And I'm reading from New Revised Standard Version, Catholic Edition. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all of Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah, as far as the Western Sea, the Negeb, and the plain, that is, the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zohar. And the Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite but pure. But no one knows his better place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired, and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab. 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was over. And Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. And the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since, never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land. And for all the mighty deeds, and for the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all the Israel. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus. My dear friends, I once more welcome every one of us to this night's message in the hearts of Jesus and many ministries. And in the account we have read in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 1 to 12, is the account of the death of Moses. Moses, we know very well, was a great man of God, very wonderful man of God. God used Moses to do great and mighty things. However, a time came when Moses was to die. And uh, when he died, the people of Israel mourned bitterly for Moses. The Bible tells us today that they mourned, mourned him for 30 days. And uh, they loved Moses so much. And at the end of the morning, 
Joshua took over the throne and started to lead the people of Israel. And God made something very remarkable. In Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 9, that Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. And the Bible tells us why Joshua was full of the spirit of wisdom. And that was because Moses laid his hands on him. We see the significance of laying hands on somebody. And so right from the fact, from the point, from the time that Moses laid his hands on Joshua, Joshua was no more an ordinary person. Joshua became a man of great wisdom and strength and courage. And so even when looking down on himself and wondering how would he be able to lead the people of Israel, for God told him that he was going to lead the people of Israel, but God told him to be courageous and be strong. And God promised to be with him as he was with Moses. And we know that Joshua had a successful ministry, just like his mentor, Moses, also had successful ministry. My dear friends in Christ, in all these we have seen, we see a great man that God used to bring glory to his name in the people of Israel. And the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 10, Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses. And this Moses was seeing God face to face, that the Lord knew him face to face. And uh, my dear friends in Christ, today we are going to reflect on this man, Moses. What made him special? Why was it that he found such a favor with God? Why was it that things he touched his hand received the attention of heaven? Today, my dear friends in Christ, I would like to bring to your attention that Moses loved God so much. Moses put God a priority in his life. Moses sought the face of God in everything. And uh, as he continued to seek the face of God, God continued to reveal himself to Moses. If I ask you, did God use Moses to do a lot of things in the time of Israel? For sure, you would tell me, brother, oh yes, God used Moses to do great and mighty things, and you will be right. But I want to tell you something tonight that many of us may not have known about Moses. Something that will be the basis for this night's message. And that breaking news is that Moses was not a young man when God called him. Moses was not in his youthful days when God called him. Moses was 80 years old when he saw the burning bush. Do you know that? <laughs> Jesus. And so, my dear friends in Christ, I'm sure that having said this to you, if you hadn't known before, you will begin to wonder, but how was he able to accomplish everything he accomplished in life? How was he able to achieve all the great exploits he achieved in the kingdom of God? My dear friends in Christ, the message of this night is to encourage every one of us to understand that it is not too late to answer the call of God upon your life. Moses was 80 years old when God called him. I mean, when he saw that burning bush, when God revealed himself in that burning bush, Moses was a nobody then. Moses was just a man who had a plan for his life thinking that he was going to end up being a shepherd, looking after a sheep of, of his master. But behold, God called him at the age of eight years. You talk about late vocation, that is Moses. You talk about the man that God called at the old age, Moses will stand out. 
he was already advanced in years when he began his relationship with God. He was already advanced in age, and yet he still accomplished much. God is still using him to accomplish great and awesome things. He led the people of Israel out of Egypt. He acted as a ruler and as, as their judge and as the one that God used to lead them through the desert. While Moses was with the people of Israel, God wrought great and mighty miracles. Many of them will remember how God used Moses to lead the people of Israel to cross the Red Sea. This was this man Moses. God gave him the Ten Commandments. And that today we are celebrating this great man Moses. And my dear friends in Christ, God is talking to us today that there is nothing he cannot do if we allow him to do that. God is talking to us today. If we allow him to use us, he is going to use us. And he is going to accomplish great things through us. Are you going to allow him tonight to use you to accomplish great things? Are you going to allow him tonight to use you to do what he wants to use you to do? There is a reason why God brought you to this world. And maybe you have not started the reason why he called you or brought to this world. Maybe you have not even started it at all. But the life of Moses is a keynote example that today, if we answer the call of God, that God will use us. That God will use us to accomplish great things. And he who used Moses to accomplish those mighty things can still use you to do wonderful things. My dear friends in Christ, many of us may know very well that the very first five books of the Bible was repeated to have been written by Moses. Well, some theologians believe that the last portion of the book of Deuteronomy was not written by him because those that part of this Deuteronomy was talking about the death of Moses. So he must have been it must have been another person that completed it. But the, the character of the writings from Genesis to Deuteronomy showed the, the, the writing style of Moses. And so God ministered to him. This man was hearing from God directly. You know, he, he was really a friend of God. And uh, to today, we reference the scripture. Those books of this the first five books of the Old Testament reflecting on the writings of Moses. Even the Ten Commandments have become the foundation for commandments and laws in most Christian countries. And so, my dear friends in Christ, the bottom line is that the God who used Moses to accomplish all this even at his old age, that God can use you even now to do great things. There is nothing God cannot do. What was limiting Moses was not age. What was limiting Moses and what will limit any person in life that God wants to use is ourselves. It is when we allow God to use us that God will start to use us. Many of us, God may have wanted to use us even when we are much younger, but we have not allowed him to use us. We have not given our lives to him. We have not opened our hearts to him to use us. But still, he kept knocking and he kept knocking at the door of our hearts, hoping that one day we will answer the call. I know people who have answered that call at a later age in their life, and then many even regret, oh, I, I wish I had known. I would have answer the call of God in my life 30 years ago, 50 years ago. But the fact is that it is not late, even now, to answer the call of God. Perhaps this message is for you. Maybe it you know right inside your mind that God has been calling you. 
maybe you think that you didn't have the right qualifications or the right education or the right connections, and this is why you may have considered yourself un unqualified to be used by God. Anyway, I have a good news for you today that you, you, God does not use people who are qualified anyway. He wants people who would allow him to qualify them. When you say yes to God, God will start to use you to do great things. Jeremiah said yes to God, and God said to use him. Moses said yes to God, and God said to use him. In the case of Moses, you may say, oh, but he was learned. Quite all right, you are right, he was learned. But how about Peter? How about most of the early disciples of Jesus? Most of them were not learned. But you know what? When they said yes to God, God used them to accomplish great things. And we also know that, that the early disciples that became the apostles, these were not merely youths. They were men who had, some of them had already gotten married and they had their, the works of their hands. Some were fishermen. They were already advanced in age. They have gotten to a certain level in life. Matthew was a tax collector. So you have an idea of the age that they were when Jesus called them. Even though the scripture didn't tell us their exact age, but from the story we see that they were not youths, definitely. But God called them. God called them, and God used them to do great things. God used Peter to do great things. In fact, on him, he called a rock and said, On oh, you I'll build my church. And he gave, them, gave, gave him the mandate of the key of the kingdom. And I tell you today, that God did not qualify Peter because he was educated, for he was not. But he qualified Peter because Peter accepted the call of God. Peter was a fisherman, as we know very well. And Jesus met him in his industry, where he was fishing. And Jesus told him, you know what, from today, you are no more going to be fisher of fish, but you shall become fisher of men. Peter did not go to start arguing with the Lord. But what he did was to answer the call of God in his life. And he followed Jesus. And from the day he followed Jesus, his life was never the same again. My dear friends in Christ, God is calling us back home. God is asking us, what are you doing with the gifts I have given to you? God is asking us, what have we done? with all the talents he has given to us. God is asking us these questions. And at the end of time, all of us will be answerable to our Lord Jesus. It, it never occurred to me, although I know that in everything we do, God is taking mark. But some time ago, some few years ago, I was in the spirit, and an angel called me, and took me by his hand, and led me into an expanse of land, I could not see the end of that land. I knew it was a big land and a very mighty land. And he showed me a wall. And this wall was under construction. And this wall was quite wall. And he took me from the beginning of the wall, from the beginning of the construction project. And he led me along the wall as if we are walking towards the end of that work construction project. We walked for a long time, a long distance, and uh, we came to the end of that wall. But that wall was under construction. All this while, this engine never said anything to me. And so when we came to the end of the wall, he told me something that I want to share with you. Something that would help you to understand why it is good for us to answer the call of God today. And this angel told me, do you see that this very wall is under construction? That it has not come to an end. It is still under construction. And I told him, yes. And then he, he lifted his hand and showed me the expansiveness of the land. And he, and he said, you can see that there are so much expanse of land that yet to be covered by this fence. 
I, I told him yes. And uh, in the spirit, it was as if, even though we cover long distance, but it was as if we have not even started the project. As if the project had not actually started really, compared with the, 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 the remaining part of the work to be done, to encircle that, that mighty land, to encircle that big land. Okay? And so, when he asked me, did you take notice of the, the expansiveness of the land? I said, yes. He told me something that, 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 that surprised me. He said, Brother Owakwe, every time you are doing the work of God, each time you pray for people, each time you minister, each time you get to the pulpit, each time you are doing the very reason why God called you to this world, this project will continue to go on. Each time you continue to do what God called you to do, the more and more pillars will be added to this construction. In other words, what it means is that if you stop the word of God, and now this is me talking now, what it means is that if I stop the work of God, that project will stop. That fence will stop. If I continue to do the work of God, then the angels will continue to put the pillars and the project will continue. It became done on me at the end of that vision that I've not even really started what he asked me to start. And when I say that, I mean, in terms of the, the work ahead, it's as if I've just gone like 1%. Even the spirit, I was conscious of the fact that I have just gone like 1%. It's like a drop of water compared with an ocean. And uh, since then, I take courage in the word of God. I encourage myself in coming to the line every day to minister, as the Spirit enables me. I encourage myself in listening to people to pray for them. It is not easy, my friend. It's not easy. It's not easy. Many of you who know me very well know that I have a full-time job. I have family and wife is in school. It's not easy. A lot of people don't know that Broke goes to the kitchen to cook. Some people don't know that Broke goes to the grocery shop. Some people don't know that Broke diapers kids, as you know, when the last boy was uh, still not able to take care of uh, himself. But, you know, these are the challenges. But when I remember that vision, I tell myself, this work will not stop. A lot of people, when they call me, they don't understand these things. They want you to answer them right away. But I use this opportunity to tell them, be patient with brother. Pray for me. I need your prayer. When you call me, I don't answer. Just know that I will get back to you. I try to do my best to answer everybody. I shared with you this in this ministry some time ago about a sister that, uh, in the course of attending to her, I, I, we, we went into late night in, in our um, you know, counseling and praying for her. And the, in the morning, she was supposed to get up as usual to pray in the chapel. Uh, but because we stayed long night in that prayer, that night, she could not wake up as she used to wake up. On the time she used to wake up. And then the Lord came to her and said, look, what are you doing here? I have been waiting for you at the chapel. What are you doing here? Before the sister could even answer that question, the Lord told her, is it because you stay with Brokwe into late night? Is that why you will leave me waiting for you at the chapel? <laughs> you said, is it the same Brokwe that you stay with into late night? That's the thing how he does. If he gets up and gets to work, this is how he talks with people, pray for them all, almost all the day. And yet he comes to a prayer line and start ministering. You know, when the sister was talking to me this thing that he experienced that morning, I was amazed because what she said was exactly how my program is. It is exactly. And which means that the Lord sees everything we do. The Lord takes account of everything we do. He sees everything to details, to the minutest details. There is nothing that could be hidden from him. And so my dear friends in Christ, the Lord is talking to us tonight. Maybe God is talking to you this night. 
Maybe you have gotten so many excuses, reasons why you cannot serve God the way you wanted to serve Him 30 years ago, or 40 years ago, or maybe 50 years ago. But the message of this night is saying, God wants to start now with you. God wants to do great things now with you. There are people in bondage to today because they have not answered the call of God. There are people who cannot know Christ because they have not answered the call of God in your life. There are villages, there are cities that can never change because you have not answered the call of God. Okay, can you imagine Moses not answering the call of God? Can you imagine such a world? Could you imagine the destiny of the whole nation, not just a family? We're talking about a nation of Israel. The whole nation would have been in captivity. They would have been in bondage in the land of slavery in Egypt. Pharaoh would have, would have used them forever. They would have been slaves in the kingdom of Pharaoh forever. But when Moses answered the call of God, that was the end of the slavery. There are people that they are, the end of their slavery cannot come to pass unless you answer the call of God. So this night is a night of reflection. It's a night to ask ourselves, Am I, have I really answered the call of God in my life? Have I really answered the call of God? What I'm doing today, is it doing the will of God? Is it what, why God created me? I've always said in a prayer line, sometimes I make it as a joke. Don't tell me, oh, I have children, I'm taking care of my children. God didn't just bring you to the world to raise children. How are you raising them? How are you raising them? It's not just producing children. How do you raise them? Yesterday in the evening, I almost cried yesterday. A, a, a young boy and a young girl met me on the road and they needed my attention and I gave them my attention. And of course, all they wanted from me was to support their project. You know, so I wasn't actually doing that project. So I said, you know what? I don't have money with me, ride me here. Can you follow me to the house? So they followed me to the house. And I came to the house, I gave them money. But the target was to preach to them. That was why I cornered them. So <laughs> when I gave them the money, and they, they were happy. And then I opened the chapter of Jesus to them. I asked the girl, are you a Christian? The girl said, yes. Before I could even say the second word, she told me the name of her church. She told me the name of her, the, 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 the group in the church she belonged to. She told me the, the Bible reading that day. She quoted the scripture. Oh, my goodness. I felt like jumping up. But that joy disappeared when I asked the boy the same question. Are you a Christian? He started looking at me. I said, okay, do you, who is God to you? He was looking at me. I asked him, okay, who, who gave you life? He looked at me and said, my mom. I said, what? He said, my mom. Your mom gave you life? He said, yes. I asked the girl, who gave you life? And the girl said, Jesus gave me life. God gave me life. I asked the boy, do you think this girl is correct? He was just like saying, oh. God, no, 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 it's mom that gave me life. And uh, I, I, I saw a, a tale of two cities. I, I saw a big contrast between the, the boy and the girl. I saw that this boy has a long way to go. I asked, how old are you? He said, I'm 40 years. And uh, the girl was just about two, three years older than, uh, about two years older than him. And uh, the life of the boy is a reflection of how he was raised in the family. The character of the boy is a reflection of the type of family he came from. Definitely, he did not come from a, a family that values relationship with Jesus. That's what it means. He couldn't have come from a family of play, prayer and, 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 and cannot understand who God is to his life. And then I asked him, okay, do you go to church? He said, no. I said, why? I said, well, I'm busy. I, I said, what are you busy doing? So I, I talk to my friends. I chat to my friends. I go to meetings, you know, just talking like somebody with that focus. I felt like, oh, my goodness. Where, what in the world is this? 
I said, do you have a mom? He said, yes, I have a mom. Does your mom go to church? And they, he said, yes. Which I didn't believe in him. Because how can they, what, the mother be going to church and they, he cannot go to church with the mom? I said, okay, do you follow your mom to the church? He said, no. Does your mom take to go to church with, with her? He said, yes. So why do you not go with your mom to church on Sundays? And he said, because I'm busy. Busy watching cartoons. Busy chatting. Busy getting to being in the Facebook. Busy doing things that are not necessary. And I started ministering to him. But the bottom line is that this is the reflection of a family that has not valued Christ, that has not made Jesus the center of their of their of their of their existence, the center of the family. When the family is weak, it reflects in the children. And so now, why am I talking about this? Because God has given you those children. He didn't give you those children that you would not be a factory to produce children. No, you have the responsibility to raise them in a godly way. This is a way you can be like Moses and from the call of God. Raise your children in a, in a Christian way. Many times we raise, our, we raise our children in a godly way, consciously. We buy for them whatever thing they want us to buy for them. We try to make them happy. We try to even to buy guns, toy guns for them. But we cannot buy Bibles for them. This is a shame. And yet we call ourselves Christians. What I'm talking about is what I witness that break my heart each time I talk to parents, especially those that their children have become vagabonds. I'm not saying that everyone that the, the, the children become vagabond didn't raise the child, child well. But most often, this is the trend. And uh, you see, God talking to us this night, it is time to answer the call of God. It is time to answer the call of God. Many of us remember the story uh, of the church uh, shooting that took place um, some years ago in South Carolina. Uh, and a, a young boy uh, went to the church and uh, just opened fire on people who came on evening fellowship. Same people. Uh, and you know that when this boy was questioned, why he did what he did, uh, he was giving, this, what he was saying shows somebody who, who has no touch with Jesus. Who bought this gun for you? You're a small boy, about 18 years old. Who bought this gun for you? He said, this is my father's gift on my 18th birthday. The father could not get a Bible for him. The father gave me a Bible. I mean, a, a gun. Many of us are still making the same mistake. We keep buying guns and toys for our children. We don't know the message we are passing to those children. We are passing the message of violence. We're not telling them to be violent, but we are opening the doors for vi life of violence. Buy Bibles. When you want to buy shirts or wear for your children, buy something that looks responsible. Buy something that you can be proud to say, this is my child. Don't buy shirts that portray demons, shirts that portray witchcrafts, shirts that portray drugs, people, and you say it doesn't matter. Who told you that? I'm here to tell you from my experience in ministry, it doesn't matter. God is talking to us. It is time to seek the face of God. It is time for us to be responsible parents. Yes. It is time. Look at what the things happen in high school these days and middle schools and even in the lower schools. It, it is, it is mind-boggling. It's disturbing. But if in our families we, we make it a, a church, a micro-church, then it reflects in the society. When we raise our children in a godly way, at least when they're growing up, they understand that there are family ethics that should be preserved. They understand that. Even when the wrong friends are coming their way, they put a limit. They understand this, my daddy will not be happy with this. My mom will not be happy with this. I go to families to pray, to preach, and sometimes 
the man, the man of the house may tell me, brother, why you know what? I, I don't believe in so much prayers. I don't believe in prayer. Some of them don't believe in prayer at all. Some have Bible, they don't open it. Ask them, when last have you opened the Bible? The man of the house has not opened the Bible throughout that year. For five years, they don't open Bible. But you have opened all the books in your career. And you're making references every time. But you cannot open the book of life. That is tragedy. It, oh, yes, that's what it is. It is tragedy. I met, I met a man some few weeks ago who told me plainly, you know what? A prayer is not necessary. It is hard work that is necessary. One has two masters and got some children, and he believes that it is his hard work that earned him all those things. Unfortunately for him, one day he came back to the house. The whole house was burnt into pieces. And I'm say it with regret here that he lost some of his children in that fire. You see, God is calling us. It is time for us to understand whatever thing we have coming from God. And God wants us to appreciate what he has given to us. He wants to appreciate it. God is calling us. It is time for us to answer the call of God. If today's message is touching your heart or has touched your heart, let it reflect in your relationship with God. Do not be at a level where you only serve God when things are good. I mean, when things are rough uh, or whatever. Some people give you, some people even when things are good, they serve God. When things are bad, they forget about God. They start seeking help some wrong way. That is what God wants from us. Some people, only when things are bad, that's when they remember God. When things are good, they forget about God. God's love for us is not conditional. It's actually unconditional. And he's calling us today, telling us that the way I called my son Moses, and he answered me, let there be somebody who will answer me tonight. Now, I have a question for you. Like Moses saying yes to God, like Mary saying yes to God, like Elijah, like Elisha, like Jacob saying yes to God, would you consider today to say yes to God? Even if you think that age is no more on your side. But I want to tell you something. Age is not even a barrier in this matter. Age is not even a factor in this matter. Not going to school is not even a fact, a, 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 an issue in this matter. It is saying yes. It is saying yes. I know people with quality who are really educated in, in the eyes of the world, you know, with big diplomas, but they don't know Christ. And a life without Christ is an empty life. <laughs> you know, it is it, a, a life that is vulnerable. And so Christ is talking to us today. God is talking to us today. So now, my dear friends, say Christ. We are being invited today in this moment in prayer to open our hearts for God to come in. Ask him to come in and take over your heart. To come and take over your life. And maybe he has been calling you all this while. You have not answered him. Now, ask him to forgive you. Ask him to forgive you for the ways the Lord has been calling you. And you know he has been calling you. But you have been given excuses. Excuses upon excuses. Oh Lord, maybe when I get a job, and now he gave you a job. Oh Lord, where well, maybe when I finish my youthful age, and now you have gone advance the youthful age. Oh God, maybe when I retire. Excuses upon excuses. But God is talking to us today. Enough of those excuses. Enough of those excuses. Let us use what God has given to us to begin to serve Him. Oh Jesus. You may have told you, oh, maybe when I get married, I will begin to serve you. Now he has given you a husband. He said, oh, maybe when I have children. Now he has given you children. He said, oh, Lord, maybe when I finish raising them. When will the excuses stop? It is a character in the life of those that God called to give excuses. Moses also gave excuses. That he was a stammerer. That Aaron was a better public speaker. But God told him, Moses, I have called you. In Exodus 7 verse 1, God told Moses, look, go to the house of Pharaoh. I have made you a God unto him. In other words, God was telling Moses, 
when you are talking, I will make Pharaoh to be so afraid. I think I was the one talking. Because I'm going to talk to you. Jeremiah gave excuses. But at the end, he said, answer the call of God. If your excuse or excuses have not come to the point of answering God tonight, now decide now to do it. It's time to say, Lord, use me. Father, use me. I give myself to you. I give my talents to you. What you are giving to me, I hand them over to you. Father, use me. Papa, use me. I don't know the manner you want to use me, but I want to say yes to you today. Use me, Daddy. Use me to accomplish all that you want to accomplish through me, Lord. I am sorry, Lord, for delaying this yes, Jesus, for delaying to say yes to you. Father, but now I'm saying yes. Papa, be merciful, Lord. Papa, be merciful, Lord. Be merciful, be merciful. Touch your people, oh God. Father, help me, Lord, to be strong in my faith, to pursue the very project you have in mind for bringing me to this world. Let that project never stop, Lord. Father, oh Lord, I answer you today. Use me to do your will. Oh, Jesus, all I have is thine. Yours I am, and yours I want to be. Do with me, Lord, whatever you will. In the name of Jesus. My friends in Christ, Moses, at a point, was about to die. And we see that in the scripture we read today, in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 1 to 12. And God took Moses to the mountain Pisgah. And there, he showed him the beauty of the land. He showed him the, the land of promise. All right? <laughs> and the Moses saw the beauty of the land. It was like a, a, a palm tree. Very beautiful. Looking greenish and promising. A land flowing with the milk and honey. How was Moses able to see all those distant land the bible says that his eyes was undeemed undeemed that is to say he had a strong eyes you know we know that old age sometimes go with dimmed sights of vision but in the case of moses his eyes were undeemed mm. And his faith was also undeemed. What a beautiful way to describe someone who walked with the Lord to the end of his life. A man who would look and see the glory of God ahead awaiting him. A man whose faith is strong even though the flesh may be weak. Wonderful way. What a beautiful way. What a glamorous way to describe walking with the Lord to the end. Talking to us. <laughs> Jesus. My dear friends in Christ, Moses is a good example of someone who chose to bear fruit in the hand of God. A typical, a classical example of someone saying, Lord, take over my life. I want to serve you. The character of the man, Moses. It's the love of Moses is showing us today that it is never too late to start serving the Lord. And that those who serve him in old age can find joy in their work. And they become a blessing to the people of God. Like to be that blessed community to your parish. There are things you can always do in that parish. There are things you can do even this ministry. There is a reason why God brought you to this ministry. Myself talking to you, God brought me into this ministry. This ministry has been existing in spirit, but God called me and I remember that night. When he, he, 
I saw his hand right in the name of the ministry. I said, look after this message for me. But I looked at the time, it was about 1 a.m. In, in, in early morning. And I knelt down, I said, God, if you are the one showing the vision, repeat it. Right there, they were praying, the hand came again. Meaning that this ministry has existed in the spirit, but he wanted somebody, a Moses, who would say yes. And I tell you, when I was saying yes, it was not easy. I remember that I had a full-time job. I remember I have children. I have family. I have responsibilities. I didn't know how to go about it. I didn't have the training. I never went to seminary school. I don't even understand the scripture. A lot of things that I read and I keep wondering, God, what are these talking about? How could you call such a man? And I say, well, God, I answer you. Do with me whatever you will. And I tell you, ever since I answered that call of God, I have never been the same. I am a living testimony that when we say yes to God, God will surprise us. God will begin to minister to us. God will do it in a way that we know that we are not the one doing it. Amen? But he wants us to say yes. And God, being a gentleman, cannot even force us to say yes. He will never tamper with our rights, our, our decision making. He allows us to make that decision. God didn't force Moses to say yes. He didn't force Mary to say yes. They all said yes on their own accord. And God used them to do great things. If today you say yes to the Lord, I tell you God will use to do great things. I tell you God will surprise you in the name of Jesus. I just feel like praying with you. That those who are supposed to be blessed in life through you, but who have not been blessed, it is time to pray for them. Let them be blessed. People that ought to be blessed in my life. But because I have not answered your call, Lord, they are still starving. Their well is still dry. Father, today, let well their well be full of water. Let them begin to harvest water from their well. Father, I'm praying for them. That even as I've answered your call tonight, I have answered your call in this message. Father, touch them, Papa. Father, bless them, O oh Lord. Let them be blessed, Papa. Let them be blessed day and night. For every blessing that shall come to them. If I had answered this call years back, Father, let those blessings come back to them. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. And then many people may be wishing, oh, I wish I could talk to Baroque right now. I said, Baroque, but I'm quite old. I can't do anything, really. Oh, let me tell you, you can do something. You can do something. Start now to ask God, Lord, now that I've answered your call, how do you want me to go about it? What do you want to do from now? How do you want you to do it? I tell you, God will always make a way where there's no way. Do not allow your human intellect or uh, faculty to suggest or lead you. Allow God, the Holy Spirit, to direct you. But I may suggest for you, though, you can start praying for, for travelers. You can start praying for repentance and conversion of souls. You can start praying for families, for end of abortion. You can start praying you know, for the sick to be healed. You take it as if you know them. This may be people which, that you don't know. But just pray for them. Pray for the people living in the subdivision where you live. The, the people in your city. The people in your state, in your country. Pray for them. Pray for conversion of hardening the criminals. For drug barons and dealers. Pray for their repentance. Pray for the end of prostitution. There are so many things to pray for. Pray for the end of hunger, hatred. Pray for those things. Pray for those people in, 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 in ISIS and Boko Haram and other Islamic fundamentalists that are killing people just because of their faith. Pray for their repentance. It was the prayer of the saints that touched the heart of Paul and made him to repent. Pray, and you see great things happen. In Acts chapter 12, the Bible tells us the story of how the prayers of the saints, the prayers of the disciples saved the life of brother Peter. Peter was to be beheaded by Herod, but the church was praying. And the church was able to save the life of Peter. 
I tell you, as you stand in the gap for somebody, you will be the reason why Herod will not cut off the head of that man. You will be the reason why Herod will not take away the destiny of that child. Stand up and pray for somebody. From today, start to pray. Begin to pray. Pray for your parish. Pray for your children, for your grandchildren. Pray for them. Pray that your children shall know God. Very important. Now that school is about to start, pray for children coming back to school. Let the school environment be sanitized. Pray that teachers will teach them things that will bring glory to God. Pray for love in the school system. Pray. There are so many things to pray for. Once you ask the Holy Spirit to lead you in that prayer, Holy Spirit will give you prayer points that will never come to an end. I tell you that. Pray that people will love the, the scripture and read the scripture and make the Bible their, their companion. Make that prayer. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. You may not see anything happening. But keep doing it. I tell you, the God who sees in the secret will surely reward you. And I tell you again, the Holy Spirit will surely use that prayer to do great things, to save a family, or to save a city. Or to save a nation. Do not despise that your prayer. The Bible tells us never to despise the days of little beginning. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 9. I am praying for you today. Let God bless you in the name of Jesus. As you get into that life of prayer, as you begin to walk in the vineyard of the Lord, may God give you the grace to do what He wants you to do. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. You can pray for the poor. Pray that the Lord will look at them. Pray for the suffering. There are so much suffering in this world. Pray for people who are in deep abject poverty and suffering. God will use your prayer to touch somebody. Maybe somebody beyond your city or beyond your nation. God cannot be limited. But when we stop praying, then we limit him. Let us be people of prayer. Let us get into that relationship that Moses had with God. That God was able to give the Ten Commandments. That God was able to use him to deliver his own people. God used Moses to solve the problem of the people. To solve the problem of the nation. A nation that was in prison. That was in slavery. Living in bondage. God used Moses to answer their prayers. Do you know that God can use you to solve that problem in that family? That God can use to solve the problem in your office, in where you're working? I am praying for you tonight. That as you stand in location, as you stand to pray, as you stand in the gap for people, God will answer you. God will answer you. Again, I say, God will answer you, my dear. Yes, my Lord. The Bible tells us that God is looking for people who will stand in the gap. God is looking for people who will stand the gap and pray. He is looking for such men. He is looking for such women. Are you among them? And the Bible says, Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Oh, Jesus. Can you imagine that? God was looking for people to stand in the gap. People to stand in prayer. People that will say, God, show mercy to this city. God, let this flood not carry this family. And God looked up and down. He found no one. Can you imagine? In all the billions of people in the world, that God is looking for somebody who will stand in the gap. Are you the one? Are you the one? God is talking to you. God is ministering to you tonight. God wants to use you. He wants to use you, my friend. Oh, I feel the burden in the heart of Jesus as the message is going on. I feel the burden of wasted talents. I feel the burden in the heart of Jesus of people that he has called into the vineyard that they were, they were doing something else and God has been calling them. But even today, may your answer to the call bring joy to the heart of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Talk to him now. Talk to him now. Just pick any prayer point and begin to pray. 
Yes, begin to pray now. Pray for somebody in the, your family. Maybe God has brought you to that family to be the instrument to deliver that child or the instrument to make your husband to repent or your wife to repent. This may be why God brought that family. You want to run away after the marriage because you are seeing what you didn't know that you ever meet in the marriage. But running away will not solve the problem. God knew that that will happen before I allowed you to get into it. Now, can you start to pray for that marriage to work? Can you begin to pray for that child to repent? Can you begin to pray that, that your child will stop that very drug life, that illicit relationship? As you talk to God, I tell you, if you don't see the result today, do not lose courage. You can see it tomorrow. You can see it next tomorrow. It could be next month. Monica, today we call her, says Monica. She prayed for years upon years. Over a decade, she kept praying for the repentance of her son, Augustine. And I tell you today, she is able to pray her horrible, hostile son, vagabond son, into a saint. And today we call her child, her child, St. Augustine. Is there a Monica that is able to pray for Augustine tonight? Is there a woman who is standing in the gap? I pray my child will not go to hell. My family will not go to hell. Nobody in my family shall go to hell. I tell you, I should stand in the gap and pray. Never giving up. God will answer you. God will answer you. The problem that many of us have is that we give up. And when we give up, we give the enemy opportunity to rejoice. But God is coming today. Never to give up. Moses did not give up. Oh, yeah, yeah. So don't give up. Talk to him. Talk to him. Ask God to make you strong. Ask him to give you rugged faith. A rugged faith is a faith that is strong. A faith that can never waver. Aha. Jesus. God can use you to silence the fear in your life. God can use you to silence the fear in that family. As he used mostly to silence the Pharaoh in the life of Israel. May God use you to silence that Pharaoh in the name of Jesus. When David answered the call of God, God used him to silence the mouth of that Goliath. That Goliath in your family, that have been harassing everybody in the family, that have been boasting their night in the family, from your great-great-grandfather, that same Goliath have been ravaging the family. Both in the family, asking who will dethrone me, asking who can challenge me. Your grandfather could not answer him. Your own father could not challenge him. Now it's your own turn. And you have seen the same pattern of problems that your great-grandfather inherited, and your father inherited, and you are not inheriting, or have inherited already. And you are wondering, what will I do? Tonight, what you do is answer the call of God. And I tell you, when you answer the call of God, God will take care of that matter. As you answer the call of God and pray, God will use you to silence that Pharaoh. Look, let me tell you, that the Pharaoh, that very spirit that is raging war against your family, only the prayer of the David will cut off the neck of that Goliath. Only the prayer of the Moses will cut off the head of that Pharaoh. It is time for Pharaoh to be drowned in the Red Sea. But the Moses had to get into action. It is ours. Father, I'm praying for your people. Even now they have decided from today, they are going to be the Moses in this generation. Father, I pray that you will give them the grace you gave to Moses so that they will stand strong in prayer. In the name of Jesus. Let your people never give excuses again. Oh, because I am I'm working. Oh, because I have children. Oh, because I am not able to go to school. Excuse upon excuses. Do you know that Moses also went to school? Do you know Moses also had a family when God called him? Moses also had, he was engaged, he was working, actively involved in work, in raising his family when God called him. And yet, after the call of God, no excuses. God is talking to us today. I want to share with you one story. And this is actually a story in the Bible. You know that when Jesus revealed himself to Peter that Peter was a fisherman. And uh, when Jesus called him to begin to be a fisher of men, which 
Peter answered the Lord. Now listen. In that moment, Peter had been following Jesus. Peter had been with Jesus. In every way he was going, Jesus was going, Peter was always with him. For example, in the upper room, Peter was there. That's the last supper. When Jesus went to the Gethsemane, the Bible says that Jesus went there with Peter, James, and John. Even in Matthew chapter 17, verse 1 to 13, where Jesus went to the mountain table with the disciples, he went to only three disciples, and that Peter was among them. Peter, James, and John. Okay? When Jesus went to the house of Jairus to raise the daughter of Jairus, Peter was there. Peter was there. You get the point? And so Peter was a, a central figure in the ministry of Jesus. We are down. When he denied Jesus, tells us a very interesting story. That Peter considered to go back to fishing, to be fisher of men. But after the death of Jesus, Peter considered to go back to pursue his fishing business. And the same Jesus came again. <laughs> And called him out of it. And it's very interesting that when he called him out of it, Jesus, right there at the seashore, said something that is very interesting. You know, it was in that episode that Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? And he asked him this question three times. And at the end, he told him, Feed my sheep. Three times. He denied Jesus three times. And Jesus came to him and asked that question three times. Calling him back to feed his sheep. To go back to the ministry. To go back to the word of God. To go back to fishing for men. To be a fisher of men. And he answered him. And he died for that cause. I like Peter who have answered the call of God before to be a fisher of men. And now, and over time, your love for Christ has, has gone down the drain, or on down the lane, and then you are now going back to the world. And God is saying to you today, come back, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Jesus. My dear friends in Christ, as we answer the call of God, God will surely bless us. God will surely straighten us. When we ignore the call of God, we begin to labor in the sea of futility. Peter was laboring in such a sea all night with his fellow disciples. They didn't even catch a sheep, not even a fish. Productive in life because we, we are going contrary to the call of God. And one thing I've seen that's come out with people who have special calling is that when they, when they disobey God, they don't want to answer the call of God, usually the things they do don't work out. Oh, yes. I, I mean, talking from experience, things they do don't work out until they answer the call of God. So why spending your years doing the wrong thing, fishing in the, in the, in the sea of unproductivity? Why? Why doing that? Well, you know that you can answer the call of God and he can tell you to cast your net and you'll catch great quantity of blessings by just by answering his call. I pray tonight as Moses answered the call of God, as Peter answered the call of God, as the earlier apostles answered the call of God, may we answer the call of God. May he straighten us in our journey with him. Father, May our eyes never be dimmed. Like the eyes of Moses, may our eyes be undimmed that we may see your glory. Thank you, Jesus, for the blessings you have given to us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We cover this message, word of Jesus, and we decree that no weapon can get this message at prospect. Nothing shall take this message away from me. In Jesus' name, we we'll cover our hearts with the blood of Jesus. We we'll cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus.
we cover this message with the word of Jesus. It shall not be taken away by the evil ones. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen.